Thank you for staying with us. Now, Nigeria's corruption index runs a risk of declining if the bill granting immunity to the presiding officers of the National Assembly is passed. This is according to the legal advisor to Amnesty International, Dr. Kolawole Olanion. With this, he urged the President, Mohamed Buhari, not to assent to the bill. He stated that the bill must be rejected if he wants to be able to deliver on his anti-corruption promises to Nigerians. And joining me still to discuss these are political analysts, John Wesley and also Francis Chilaka. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen, for Thank staying with us. Thank you. Thank How you. are we going to react to this? Is this government really fighting corruption? Let's start from there. If, 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 if what we have, and we call it fighting of corruption, there are some people today who shouldn't be governors. You don't, you don't have a governor who has a case, you place a travel ban on him, and then suddenly he joins a party, he becomes an angel, all your sins are wiped away. Going a step further, I don't even think we have a National Assembly right now. We, we, have, so the, long we, as, we have the Ninth Assembly. So long as you have, have the Ninth Senate. So long as you have a, a Senate where yeah, we have the Senate. everybody who leaves government house becomes a senator, something is wrong. Something is definitely wrong. You no. keep, we keep recycling the same people over and over again. So tell me, since we started with this night assembly, what can they boast of? What bill can they boast of? Well, this is, this, this is a bill that they're, they're trying to bring. Now, you see, interesting, John Wesley, it's, it's past the second reading. How do you begin to react to this? This is a bill of impunity. Yes. That's the truth. Because when you look at the Ninth Assembly, let us begin to count how many governors we have there. So these governors, I can be 100% sure that these past governors would be part of those even spending a whole lot of money to sponsor this bill. You know why? Once you get in there, it doesn't mean that you cannot be tried. Some persons can come up with your corruption cases and what have you, and then you are being tried in court. They saw what happened to Saraki mm -hmm. while he was Senate president. They saw what happened to Dino Milai. And so as a result of this, they are seeking immunity such that all their sins can <laughs> be covered if they have to remain in the Senate for eight years, 12 years, whatever, till they die. Their sins will be covered. They cannot be tried. Nobody can touch them. They remain like that. So it's of no use. The Senate, the National Assembly, is meant to be a place where you can be held accountable at any given time because you are speaking for the people. But these people all of a sudden have turned the National Assembly to a place where they speak for themselves, speak for their generation, speak for their family members. That's why somebody in the Green Chamber can bring his four wives to, to the floor of the chamber and display them and begin to talk badadash on the floor of the National Assembly. And that's why they will be calling for immunity so that whatever they do, and that's why Elisha Habu till tomorrow can slap um, you know, well, and do somebody. And we have not heard anything of that case till this present time. And he's still a sitting member of the Senate. Now, we, we know we have a culture of impunity already as it exists in Nigeria and, and that of corruption. What, what effect do you think this bill might have on, on impunity and the fight against corruption? It simply means we're not fighting corruption. It simply means that every fight against corruption will have to be thrown out. Because, you see, when you have a system, I keep saying it, that the problem we have in Nigeria is lack of system. We do not have a system that holds people responsible for their actions. And that is what we need. We don't need Mr. President chasing people mm -hmm. around that you have stolen something, you have taken money from one state. No, no. If the system is there, the system on its own will arrest you. It brings us back to our constitution. I keep saying it. The bane of Nigeria's problem is the 1999 constitution. So long as you have a constitution that talks about immunity, you have a constitution that talks about federal character, you have a constitution that talks about, um, uh, what's the third one now? Um, the one that gives people preferences. Quota, the quota, quota system. system. Yeah. So long as you have these things in place, then I don't understand. It simply means that 
we have rulers rather than leaders. Yes. And that our rulers are more superior to us. But we know that as a leader, you're supposed to be responsible to the people. But today they are not. Every ruler, go to the gov, go to the state, to, to the various states. The governors are living large. They have retinue of cars, retinue of aids. Mm. The other day, a governor appointed three SA on street light. <laughs> is that not is, is is that the kind of thing we should be talking about in this country? It's not. So the point is that the National Assembly, unfortunately, do not even know why they are there. A lot of them don't know why they are there. Because if they know why they are there, they're supposed to checkmate the executive. But they're not. In Nigeria, the three arms of government, there is no separation of power. All right, now, John Wesley, yeah. uh, should, should this bill sail through legislature? Do, do you think President Mahmoud Buhari should assent to it? No, this is, uh, in fact, the, the, the truth of the matter is, I will not, in fact, I, 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 I will be one of those who will launch a campaign that the bill should never and ever be signed by the president. If it is signed by the president, in fact, I will be one of those who will launch a campaign that the National Assembly be shut down. The truth of the matter is, you cannot, you cannot imagine that you are going to have people sit in the National Assembly enjoy immunity. In fact, Benny, the truth of the matter mm -hmm. is, somebody will move But, but they did say this immunity is against possible blackmail and, and witch hunting. It's for, a for lie. The there are no, I mean, you see, <laughs> right from the days of John the Baptist, when you are in politics, there are propaganda. There will be witch hunt, there will be what have you. These people will tell you why they want this thing. You will see that you will brandish a cake for it to be attractive, attractive to a child or whatever to eat. You see, so when they say such things, you, if you want to do something, you see somebody will commit a, a, a crime of rape, will give you 101 reasons why it happened. So these people, they want to... Uh, enjoy immunity. They, will, they, they must have asked themselves the questions as, what if Nigerians are asking, why do we want immunity? Somebody what do we tell them? So somebody must have provided the answer that this is what we would tell them. Yes. So in the first place, when you talk, if you don't want to be blackmailed, you don't want to be whatever, you should not go to public office. No, but, but, but going a step further, you know, you, you will also agree that this Senate has been running around several bills to protect themselves. Mm -hmm including the presidency. We have the fake, uh, what do you call it? Um, fake news. Fake news. We have a uh, social media yeah. bill. All of this is meant to hate speech. I mean, hold hate the speech. people in such a way that the people cannot speak. Now, let me, let, let's put it this way. If you're doing the right thing, you will not be worried what people would say about you. You will not be worried whether people are spreading rumor or spreading fake news or hate speech. But you see, when, even when you talk about the hate speech, I keep telling people, so long as the government thrives on lies, the people are bound to search for news mm -hmm. on their own. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about the Dapchi girls. Mm -hmm. Nothing has happened. We'll be talking about Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. You and I, we, we, we all heard them saying that Boko Haram repentants are going to go abroad to school. But there are Nigerians who have not committed one crime. Nobody's sending them abroad to school. What it means is that, by and large, this government is trying to legalize illegality. Now, amazingly, this, this bill first appeared in Parliament in 2016. Yes, 2016. And the lawmakers then, they, they backtracked it because there was a public outcry against mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Well, why do you think we're having a renaissance <laughs> of the same so bill in that 2020? Is to, that is to tell you that if these people are actually for the people, if in 2016 there was an outcry against it, and now it's resurfacing, is to tell you that it's for selfish interest. Because if the people already spoke, if you are there to serve the people, and the, the, the people spoke that they don't want this, and then you are bringing it up again, it means that what you are saying to the people is that they are dummies. But I, I would say that, that there are no pros to, the, the, the possible pros there to, are to no, this bill protecting there can our, never, the tenets of our democracy as it is, and, Benny, and members can, doing they, their duties. In, in, Benny, in, Benny yeah. how can that protect democracy? What is democracy? Government of the people, by the people and for the people. So who are they representing? Is the it people? government is of it the go Senate? Is it government, government of, of the Senate or the executive? It's not the executive. See, let me ask you the number one question. In the United States of America, show me one senator that carries the bag and wears the garment of immunity. There is none. There is none. That's the truth. 
even the president, even the sitting president, the sitting president he just went through went through trial. Is that possible in Nigeria? I mean, a major, trial. a major trial. Is that possible in Nigeria? A major trial. Just in now imagine that in Nigeria, our senators mm -hmm. are now being clothed with immunity. Uh, immunity. Imagine what right. will happen. Now let's let's for a moment. Um, deliberate on the human rights of Nigerians. And bearing in mind, there's, there's a sitting senator right now, and Elisha Abo, who was caught in a sex store uh -huh. in Manhattan. <laughs> I mean, does, wouldn't this bill protect someone in the likes of, of Elisha? No, but, it's but, not, ab absolutely. That's what I told you. It's going to protect him. You would not... It, look at the, the, the Elisha Abo who committed an offense that is supposed to be behind bars was in the defensive, was in the defensive in the committee, in the screening committee, in the disciplinary committee, in the defensive, and would even almost still rise from his seat to even slap the wife of uh, the, the, the Senator Oluremiti if, if it were possible. Well, if you, you know, you know, you know, you know, for me, sometimes I, I, get, I, get, I get so emotional when, it, when, when issues like this arise. Why? Because we, the Nigerian people, we are also part of the problem. This same senator we're talking about a few months back was given an award. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is this same senator a few months back went and was sharing, is it pure water or whatever, mm -hmm. to his constituency? Mm -hmm. And people are hailing it. It is time that Nigerians realize that sovereignty belongs to the people. That's it. Until we get to that level. And that's why I keep saying, it is not when it is six months to election, INEC will start voters' registration, mm -hmm. voters' education. The National Orientation Agency, where are they? They have gone to sleep until you... This is the time for them to educate Nigerians on their rights. Nigerians have no rights. The ordinary Nigerians, you and I, we have no rights. The only way you get a right in Nigeria is when you become a politician. Become a governor, become a senator, become a member of the House. That is when you have rights. Other than that... You have no rights. Oh, you, you, earlier on when you were talking, you did make mention to the 1999 Constitution as the bane of our problem. Yeah. And if, if this bill should go through, it's a section of the, uh, of the, uh, of the Constitution that seeks to, to amend, section 308. It is, mm -hmm. Shouldn't we be deliberating on amending the entire 1999 Constitution as it stands? John Wesley. Who will amend, amend it? it? Is it not the National Assembly? Yes. By the time you want to amend the, national, the, the Constitution, one of the things that we'll be looking forward to amend there is the take home of these guys. Will they amend that? The major things that need amendment in that constitution will not be amended by these guys. Well, what's, well that, I, how, I, how do we for, go How do we no, go for me, I don't even this. believe that there's need to amend that document. I just believe that doc, that document should be shred. Because that document, if you start from, it says, we the people of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I wasn't part of the we. I don't know if you were there. Yeah, but, but we you all know, cannot but, be represented. No, 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 no. A, a referendum? No, 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 no. What we see, we need to be sincere with ourselves yes. in this country. And the sincerity starts with our constitution. We need to have a document. This is the 21st century. This is the time we should be thinking forward, forward thinking in terms of technology, mm -hmm. in terms of breakthroughs. We are here talking about immunity for corruption, immunity for stealing money. No, no, no. That document, let us shred that document and do something. I'm happy that um, the former president, Olusha Gobasanjo, has joined in the campaign to say it is time to get this thing thrown away. How can all Nigerians design wishes be represented in, in the constitution? Because we can't, you, you, a if, country if, of over 200 recall, million people, we can't recall, recall. Do you know that? Let me tell, let me give and you. And that's why we have representatives. Let me give you an, let me give you an example. Yes. During the years of uh, full scarcity, do you know that we spoke in one voice? Exactly. Reduce the whatever or make sure you provide us with, that's one voice. Okay. So. For every point where we speak in one voice, that's where you can use the word we. We agreed. We agreed. If you look at it now, over time, there have been issues Nigerians have been agreeing over. We. On the issue of security, we, we. want this. On the issue of this, we. So those things, it's easy. In fact, social media, what have you, and all of this, has made all of these things so easy. Ordinarily on Twitter, you could just carry out a referendum on Twitter. And you get your result. And then you get the result there. You could carry yeah, it out on that, any other me, platform and you me, get the results yes. there. And, and more profane, how we, the people of Nigeria, can be part of this. No, I just, that, I just. Yeah, I, I want to hear, I, I need Francis to okay. you. No, yes. For me, how we, the people, can get involved is first and foremost, 
We all agree that there is need to discard it. You cannot agree on something. You want to shred it. We need to shred it. Once you shred it, you will, be, you will see that a new one will come in place. Because the Nigerians, are, there are a lot of agitations going mm -hmm. on. And these agitations, each day, people are preferring solutions to it. There was a confab held by um, Jonathan's administration. Mm -hmm. What has come of it? At least we know that in that confab, Nigerians spoke. Mm -hmm. Every Nigerian spoke. But what has come of it? What we have today as a constitution is foisted on us by the military. That's it. So we need to let it go. If we really mean democracy, we need to let it go. Without that, we are not talking about democracy in this country. And so both of you do, you say you do agree the fact that this bill will not protect, stabilize the house and ensure our democracy continues to flourish <laughs> at both state and, and national level because that is the biggest clamor for this bill by those, the proponents of this bill. John Wesley, the expression of your face is like... <laughs> no, that, the, because the word flourish is actually making my expression look like that. Because the truth of the matter is this bill, we dampen our democracy. We not make our democracy flourish. We also cut off these guys from their constituents. Absolutely. But it means that the members of the constituency of these guys can no longer question them. And so you're saying there's no merits to this bill at all? No, oh. absolutely no merit. This is something that should not even... The whoever dreamt about it is supposed to be taken away from that Senate by now should be examined. What were you thinking? But, but let me ask a question. Yeah. In all of this, what has happened to the electoral bill? What has happened to it? That's there a, are that, bills... That's a bill they should be paying attention to. Thank you. There are bills that ordinarily, have, you know... Did not even see the light of the day. That ordinarily, I've never encountered any senator that sponsored a bill for welfareism of this nation. You're going too far. No, I'm, I'm only. I'm just saying. Let us even talk let, about education. Did, nobody has ever nobody. sponsored a bill on education. Okay, Health. this is this is the problem in the education. I said, okay, now we are talking about coronavirus. We are talking about different things. Nobody is thinking that what bill should we sponsor to ensure that. Our the health system is top notch. Wesley, you're going too far. Okay. Sorry, you're going yes. too far, Wesley. Talk about security. <sighs> what bill have they proposed? Even the one that some people, some governors sat down to propose, what came out of it? Do you understand? So, what okay. are we talking about in this all, country? All right, gentlemen, we're running out of time, but just before we go, I'm going to need your parting shots in just 30 seconds, if you can. I mean, the way forward from where we are now, from where we stand as a country. <laughs> Francis. The way forward is we need to be sincere with ourselves. We need to shred the 1999 constitution and come up with a new model that reflects the real and good intentions of Nigerians. John Wesley? The way forward is very clear, like Francis said. Number one, we must acknowledge that this is our nation. We have no other. Number two, we must redefine our path for us to agree that we as Nigerians, we live in this Nigeria, and this Nigeria must be for us. That's all. Gentlemen, it's been such an interesting time and very eye-opening with you this evening on Plus Politics. Thank you, political analyst John Wesley and also Francis Chilaka thank for you. your contributions on the thank show tonight. Thank you very much. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Do stay with us. The case has generated tension as no election dispute resolved by the Supreme Court of Nigeria had been set aside by the Apex Court in the past. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, had revealed that a seven-man panel of Supreme Court justices led by Justice Tanko Muhammad had been misled by the All Progressives Congress, APC, and so the judgment should be reversed. However, after several weeks of bickering by both political parties and postponement by the Supreme Court, the Apex Court finally made its decision known. Today, the Supreme Court has affirmed its decision that Hope Uzodina was legitimately elected the governor of Imo State. It has refused the application to set aside its judgment as an abuse of court process. We want to appreciate the Supreme Court and we also want to appreciate our colleagues on the other side. This is the essence of having a court. Instead of resorting to violence or self-help, they have come before the court. The Supreme Court uh, 61 dismissed the application 
on the ground that it lacks merit, that the Supreme Court does not have the jurisdiction to review its judgment or to set its judgment, unless on certain exceptional grounds, which none of those grounds uh, was uh, playing out in that case. Councils involved in the case say it was clear that the Supreme Court displayed the highest form of independence as the judgment by the seven-man panel had one out of seven Justice Chima Nwezi recant on his earlier decision and take the side of the PDP. The fundamental issue is that it shows the independence of each justice of the Supreme Court in um, determining issues before them. One of the justices dissented. So as far as he is concerned, he found that the, uh, the decision ought to have been set aside and he set it aside. What is the, then the implication of his decision? The implication of his decision is that he expressed his opinion, but then the majority carried the day. In other words, the authority for whatever it is now is the decision of the six justices that will not be the authority for subsequent application that will come. Some believe that with the new judgment, the case has finally been resolved and there is no hope for further appeal. The court has spoken twice that Uzo Dima is the governor of, of Imo State. I want to appeal to everybody to go back and work with him. The Supreme Court will not speak a third time on this matter. If any other person brings any application similar to this, we rely on the decision just delivered today to be an authority for us to ask the court not to uh, urge a majority. So that's the issue. Many say justice should not only be done, but to be seen to be done. Now that the Supreme Court has served its own dose of justice, it is hoped that governance can now resume in Imo State. Amadin Uyu, Plus TV Africa. Here is my take. As claimed by a lot of people, Adams or Shomele has definitely not been the best chairman the All Progressives Congress has had. But I believe he deserved to be given a concrete reason for this suspension. A lot of Nigerians have already lost confidence in the judiciary. But instead of pulling their weight, they are still acting as the, the pawns of some powerful forces. However, to the other leaders in Nigeria, I say focus on your work and do your best. Leave out personal biases and conflicts when leading your followers. And on the issue of the immunity bill, I believe the bill ignores the history and legacy of corruption in Nigeria and its potential impact on human rights. It is also at odds with Nigerians' international commitments as members of both the United Nations and the Commonwealth. I believe it will protect lawmakers from legal consequences for corruption, exacerbates the impunity that prevails in Nigeria's political circles and could worsen the country's ranking in Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index. All these will also have a negative effect on the human rights of Nigerians. That's all for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow by 7 p.m. Until then, be well.